Hello everybody, welcome back to Alan Wall's Photography. I'm Alan. Uh, today we're, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a, uh, a little bit of a test, a very non-scientific test, uh, to answer a question about macro photography that a lot of people ask. But before we get started on that, I wanted to say thank you to every one of you that that watches these videos and shares them. I, I can't make jokes about only having five followers anymore because there's more than a hundred of you now that are watching the videos and that's hugely uh, gratifying to me. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, so what about today? Well, today we're going to answer the age-old question that's not really age-old. It's probably only a few years old and that is, what is better for macro photography, a full frame camera or a crop frame camera? So let me tell you how this came about. Uh, I hear this quite a bit. I've read lots of articles in the past, people saying that a crop frame camera is better, or a, a full frame camera is better when you're doing macro photography. And I'll tell you that the probable result of this is going to be, doesn't make a bit of difference. And what I was going to do was I was going to set up uh, both kinds of cameras from the same manufacturer at home and do it in a controlled environment using exactly the same lighting, photographing the same thing at the same magnification and then comparing like the resolution of the photographs which seems to be the, the single most important uh, reason that you'd choose to use a full-frame camera. Uh, but as I was getting ready to do the video, I looked outside, and today is probably the most perfect day so far this year. Uh, it's about 65 degrees, and it's sunny. There's not a cloud in the sky. There's no breeze to speak of, and there's just no way I'm sitting at my dining room table taking a bunch of indoor photographs when it's pretty like this. So what we're going to do instead is a completely unscientific experiment that's probably going to have no meaningful results. But I'm going to take uh, two cameras with me, and I'm going to go for a walk in one of my favorite nature preserves uh, near where I live. It's absolutely glorious out here today. We'll find some things to take pictures of, and I'll just take pictures of uh, of this, the same things unless they fly away with both cameras. And then we'll look at them uh, later on when I download them, and, and we'll see if there's any difference at all. Um, but we'll we'll get into that as we go. Let's, uh, let's gather the equipment up and uh, go for a walk. All right, so we're, uh, we're walking off into the woods and we're going to be going straight through this little patch of woods down to the, down to the water. There's a bay at the end of this. It's beautiful. And there are some just incredible trees and uh, oh, it's, it's stunning out here. Uh, and it's just a, a lovely day to be out. It really is. Anyway, I am, like I said, going to be doing this incredibly unscientific experiment. Sorry about the uh, videography. I really am going to have to get one of those GoPros. I tried it once and it was just terrible. Could never use it. It kept shutting down. But uh, maybe I'll go for one of those eight blacks that just came out or is just coming out because this is a pain in the use that this phone is. Anyway, what I'm bringing with me, um, and we're just going to go somewhere nice and sunny. I'm not going to be doing any flash stuff out here today. Uh, and that is just because with everything else I'm carrying, I just didn't have room to put that stuff in as well. The full frame camera I'm going to be using is this uh, Nikon. It's a, a D850. It's my main camera. 
it's got 45 or something megapixels and uh, it's a wonderful camera i use it for a, a lot of stuff um it, it's i would say it's my main camera um but there are there are times i'll choose to use another camera and the other one that i'm bringing is if i can get it out without dropping it is well it's upside down but it's uh, another nikon uh it's another re reasonably recent model it's the uh d7500 which is one of their slightly better crop frame sensor cameras it the point being that most of the features that are important are the same. Uh, and when we get back and look at the, the photographs, I can tell you about a few of the differences between the two cameras that, that may have an impact. The thing that most people talk about when they're comparing full frame to crop frame, uh, and when they come down on the side of crop frame is that the full frame camera is just so heavy uh, to lug around, which I think is a fairly ridiculous argument. I mean, it may be a few ounces heavier, but for crying out loud, it's, it, it shouldn't make that much of a difference. It's not like you've got a 500 millimeter prime lens on it or anything. The macro lenses don't weigh that much. Uh, lenses. What I have is uh, a Nikon uh, 85 millimeter macro lens, which is designed for the crop frame camera. I have that on the small camera. And then I have a 90 millimeter full frame macro lens uh, from Tamron, the new G2 version on the big camera. So this is, this is my first stop and like as you can see this area is just absolutely stunning it's so unspoiled there's there's not a soul out here well that's not true there was a a couple of ladies have gone for a walk but they left ahead of me and as i was walking down the path i saw this little purple flower sitting there getting the sun obliquely i think it'll make a pretty photograph so we'll start out with uh, the full frame camera i'm going to do a little cheating here and just bend a couple of these branches a little bit out of the way oh there's a uh, there's a spider on the purple plant so let's see if we can get a, a decent frame of that that's not a spider, that is a, um, an assassin bug on that plant. Okay, so I'm going to uh, shoot at about f8, which will give us a little bit of depth of field, but it'll still blur out the background. Um, I'm probably going to need an ISO. We'll start at 400 and see what that gives. Yeah, 400 I can still shoot at uh, about 180th and, and should be able to stop any movement from the breeze. I'm also going to grab a hold of the, uh, of the plant to stop it from blowing so much in the breeze. Now what I do is I use uh, the autofocus to get me in the ballpark and then I do my focusing by moving the camera or moving the subject. If you're new to macro photography, um, I would give you one piece of advice right off the bat, especially when you're out here in, the, in nature. And that is set your uh, camera on burst. No, you don't have to set it on burst. You can just plan on shooting more than one exposure. And, and I recommend taking several because with macro, the difference between pin sharp focus and and kind of messed up pictures can be a fraction of a millimeter. So oftentimes I'll put the camera on uh, uh, on burst mode and just um, and just shoot uh, 
you know, half a dozen pictures and then I can pick the one I like, usually as I'm moving very slightly. This is embarrassing, but all the leaves just fell off. <laughs> I, I have this effect on flowers or any plants. In fact, most living things, if I get very near them, they just die and uh, their petal, the petals just all fell off this. Fortunately, there's a little one next to it. So I'm gonna use the crop frame camera now. The 85 millimeter, it's only, it, this might make a difference too. This is only goes to F 3.5. It's, it's a less expensive lens. Uh, but um, what I'll do is I'll set the exact same settings. So we'll put it on F8 at 1 80th of a second and 400 on the ISO and we'll shoot the there's this little bud thing right next to the flower we'll shoot that again I'm gonna stop it from shaking quite so much you'll see that the the working distance between these two cameras is about the same. I mean, of course, the 85 millimeter is designed for a crop frame camera, so I'm getting that working distance. And, and because the 90 is designed for the big camera, I'm able to shoot from about the same distance. So we'll see what those look like. And um, let's move on. Let's go find something alive. get over how gorgeous it is out here today. I'm going to give you just a, a couple of uh, basic uh, macro tips uh, when you're out and about looking for, for something to photograph, especially if you're looking for insects. You know, if you're out looking for antelopes um, to photograph, it's probably a good idea to keep moving because there probably won't be a lot of antelopes within three feet of you. If you're looking for insects, it's a, it's a really good idea to find a promising bit of territory like I'm looking at right now. It's full of some kind of yellow flowers. I have no idea what they are. They look like daisies. Uh, and there's clover uh, as well. And this, this little hedge is just buzzing with every kind of uh, pollinating insect you can think of. There's honeybees and um, bumblebees and all kinds of waspy things. Uh, just a tremendous um, variety. So it's often a good idea, if you find a place like this, is just to uh, get comfortable. Sometimes I'll actually sit in the middle of the flowers um, and uh, just have your camera ready because the, the creatures will come to you um, and it saves you having to constantly be on the move. Because if you're walking around, you often miss most of the good stuff. It's going to be right in front of your nose um, if you slow down enough to, to find it. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a, a patch that uh, has maybe somewhat fewer wasps than this. And then um, I'll settle down and we'll get some pictures. I found a spot that uh, looks very promising. It has a variety of different uh, pollen producing uh, plants going on down here, as well as plenty of clover. And there's, uh, I just missed that bumblebee, but there's, there's 
insects crawling over most of these plants, hoverflies, all kinds of different things. So I'm just going to settle in here for a few minutes and um, and, and see what uh, I can find and uh, we'll take some pictures. just came across something uh, fairly interesting. It's uh, a spider that um, we have a lot of them around here, but I, I don't know if uh, that's the case everywhere. He's in the shade, believe it or not. There's a patch of shade that he's hanging in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up my um, shutter speed on both cameras and pump the ISO way up uh, to about, well, we'll say about 1600, somewhere around there, and see if there's any difference in the low light performance. Of course, it's got more to do with the quality of the camera and the type of sensor than it does the size of the sensor, but we'll, we'll look at it anyway. We'll pretend we're being scientific. So I'll take some pictures of this uh, cool looking spider. Well, I'm fairly sure I've already uh, told you a couple of times how gorgeous it is out here. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, it really is the, the nicest day of the year so far. And there have been plenty of plenty of bugs. Nothing nothing spectacular or uh, particularly unusual. But boy, it's just nice being out here. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not sure that this test is going to tell you anything. I, I must say, though, I'm a little bit surprised in how much I love shooting with the D850 over the other camera. I'll tell you all the reasons why when I get back. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to ruin the afternoon by chattering all the time. I think I'm going to wander around a little bit longer, see what else I can find, then I'll get back to the computer and uh, we'll, uh, download these photographs, and uh, you can join me in seeing it. There's no difference. See you in a bit. tried going out to take pictures with um, two cameras and planning on taking two shots of everything or four shots of everything it is a pain in the butt it really is 
For one thing, the two camera straps, which you can see in this image, kind of cross. And as you walk around after a while, whoops, wrong way. This is my $100 gimbal that uh, I thought I was getting a deal on, but was actually getting ripped off on. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the two camera straps, the more you walk around, the more they strangle you from uh, both sides. It's bizarre. Anyway, if you try to take two pictures of everything, you have to... You have to make sure your camera settings are the same and you don't move position. And with rare exception, none of these creatures out here could give a damn. I mean, they'll sit around for one picture and then they're gone. So it's, it's hard to do. I need an assistant. I need an assistant who can carry my cameras and... Uh, mop my brow doesn't need mopping today but you know never can be too safe and then then i can just uh reach out and uh they like, can put a camera in my hand that's the way it was in surgery i suppose this is a little different anyway the day hasn't got any less gorgeous it's a tiny bit cooler and the sun is now coming in at a fairly low angle. It started getting dark far, far too early. Anyway, I'm going to take a different route back to the car, see what else I can find. And then we can wrap up this rigorous scientific experiment that we're doing. As you probably know by now, if you've uh, watched any of my other videos look at this place it's absolutely well that's the trees there's a little wooden bridge here it's absolutely lovely anyway if you've watched any of my video videos you probably know that I have tremendous luck meeting nice people when I'm out walking around well I just met another one that's three this year his name was Winfred and he was an elderly chap uh, out for an afternoon stroll. Um, turns out he's a retired 747 jumbo jet pilot who used to fly as a captain for um, Pan Am. That's pretty amazing. I've never met a Pan Am captain. They went out of business. A long, long time ago, but super interesting chap. Had lots of great stories. I'm so lucky getting to meet interesting folks. It turns out his wife is um, like the number one head honcho at a Leica camera shop. I didn't even know they had Leica camera shops, but uh, apparently she is. So... Uh, I hope I get to meet Winfred again, so maybe I can get a discount on uh, the Leica I'm never going to buy. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you about that. It was a, a pleasant surprise. Only person I've seen out here. Well, one lady with a dog. She was not nice at all. Anyhow, I'm heading back to the car. Still looking for interesting things to photograph, just not seeing a lot right now. No day out in the woods is complete without me doing something stupid. I had to change a battery somewhere along the way. I did take rather a lot of pictures and I was just, I got back to the car and I was unpacking all my stuff. And I noticed one less battery. And if, uh, if you're a Nikon shooter, you know that an ENEL15A is not something you just casually toss aside. 
I'm not cheap. No, I let, let me correct that. I am cheap. I'll walk back and forth out here all night if I have to, to find this. You're probably wondering why my shirt is a different colour. I don't blame you. It's because I didn't end up leaving that park until it was dark last night because I was not going to leave without finding that battery. In the end, I did leave without finding that battery. I don't know where it is. I stopped everywhere I took a photograph. And anyway, I've been wondering if, if uh, Winfred might be a pickpocket as well as an airline pilot. I don't think so. He didn't strike me as the type and he was never closer than 20 feet from me. That would have been tricky. Anyway, I, I downloaded the pictures. I've had a good look at all of them and they pretty much showed me what I expected to see. Uh, you know, the idea is, the question was, if you're going to, to shoot macro photography, should you use a full frame camera or a crop frame? You know, unless you're only going to shoot macro, I think the answer to that question is, if you can afford it, always get a full frame camera. I mean, uh, the Nikon D800 or is it the D700? D700. They're selling that thing for about the same price as you can get a middle of the range uh, crop sensor camera. Anyway, there are just so many reasons that having a full frame camera is, uh, is helpful. If you're doing portraits or if you're doing uh, landscape stuff, pretty much if you're doing anything. And when it comes to macro, I was expecting to tell you that it doesn't really matter what you use. The, the sense is plenty big enough for anything you're going to do. But I, I was surprised. I really was when I actually compared apples to apples. Uh, the, the sensor on uh, a full frame camera is big. It's like 36 um, uh, millimeters, 35 millimeters by 23 or 24, whereas the crop is 23 wide by only 15 or 16 tall. So it's a it's a much smaller sensor. Um, the, and certainly there's a lot of confusion about what that means. When you're using the the crop frame sensor with the appropriate lenses that are made for that camera, you get the impression that you're closer. It, it appears that the image is magnified. The image isn't magnified. The, the view is cropped in. That's what crop frame means. So if you're shooting with a macro lens, and both of the lenses we had yesterday were... Um, macro lenses, an 85 millimeter and a 90 millimeter one-to-one -one real macro lens. And the point is that whatever it is you're photographing with that lens is going to be the same size on each camera. It's just, you're going to have a wilder, wilder, well, you might have a wilder, but you're also going to have a wider field of view uh, on, the, on the full frame camera which is why you definitely want that if you were going to be shooting landscapes. But with the crop frame sensor, it appears that you're zoomed in or magnified, but you're really not. The, the image on the sensor is the same size. It's just filling less of the sensor on a full frame camera. So there are differences though. The, the, the units, the sections of the sensor that actually capture the light, the uh, photo sites, are larger on a full frame sensor, which means there's more light being gathered for each pixel that's being represented on your uh, files. So because of that, the full frame sensor tends to perform a little bit better uh, in low light, for one thing, even though my full frame camera is rated for um, a uh, lower ISO than that D7500 Nikon is, 
which is rated at, uh, I wrote it down, it's like 51,000 is the rating for the uh, crop frame, whereas uh, Nikon says 25,600 is the upper limit for the uh, full frame camera. Of course, you can extend that, but uh, either way, you've got more light on the full frame sensor and I think you're going to see that it actually um, makes a difference uh, when we compare these photographs. Anyway, the crop frame camera that I've got is about, uh, I think they're selling them now for 800 bucks, which is uh, actually less than I paid for it when I bought it new. Uh, the D850, the full frame camera, uh, camera is uh, what, something under $3,000, $2,800. Um, so there's a big price difference, no question about it. You'll hear people complain about uh, using a full frame camera when they're doing walking around macro because it's so heavy. Well, it's 10 ounces heavier than the, uh, than, that's a little bit over half a pound more than the crop sensor camera. And the argument they give is, because it's so heavy, it's cumbersome and hard to uh, hard to use in the field. It is because it is large and heavy that I like it in the field. It's much easier to stabilize a heavy camera in your hands, especially when you're right in there close, than it is a light camera. That's gonna that's gonna move uh, much easier with any movement that you make. One of the other factors with the full frame camera is it's packed with features. It does everything um, and all of it is useful, but not in macro photography. You don't even need all the tremendous autofocus that this camera gives you. The, uh, the crop frame camera has 51 autofocus points whereas the full frame sensor has 150 something. Uh, but it doesn't matter because you're going to be manually focusing. Or maybe you do like I do, you use autofocus to get you in the ballpark and then focus in from there. So while there are a lot of differences in the two cameras, when it comes to uh, macro photography, you aren't going to use a lot of the other features that the full frame sensor offers. Now, um, I would point out that the size of the sensor is by no means the most important or the only critical factor in how good your macro photographs are going to be. Your lens probably counts way more than the size of the sensor, to be honest. Lighting is also crucial for good pictures. And uh, you'll notice yesterday I did not take a flash and that was on purpose because it would have been too bulky with two flash setups on, uh, on one on each camera because I was lugging all of that around over my shoulders. So um, it was hard enough with just cameras to keep it from all bashing into itself. So these are just plain available light daylight shots and you can you can see that um, uh, you know the the lighting conditions as the day went on and the sun went down uh, were a bit more challenging but it's still good to see how that affects the full frame camera less uh, because you have that better low light um, performance one of the things that you'll find shooting macro with full frame is that your backgrounds, even at f8, are going to be much nicer than they are with a, a crop frame camera, uh, which tends to, to pick up more of, of the background than, than you necessarily might want. I came across one of these assassin bugs. These are the most revolting creatures alive. Uh, or well, almost. Inside of this big mess is a uh, an assassin bug that creeps around and eats ants and anything else it can find. It hangs around in plants, waiting for things to come eat the plant, and it eats them. All of this stuff on its back, that's the corpses of all the things that it ate. What it does is it sucks their juices out and then tosses their carcass on its back and lugs it around with them which is pretty stupid. Um, can you imagine doing that with like a cow carcass? 
you wouldn't be able to carry but one. Anyway, he's got about 50 bug skeletons. And it's not a good photograph. I took about 10 photographs with the crop frame. I just could not get it uh, well focused. Um, however, the, the full frame is infinitely better, much more resolution. You can see the individual exoskeletons. Well, I don't know what this is, maybe a starfish that it ate. But yeah, it's um, a, a much sharper image. I love this photograph. It's the only one I took yesterday that I will be keeping, but uh, this big stingy wasp thing is being attacked by a yellow jacket. And look how he's holding his arms up like that, waving him off. Love this picture, especially with the blue sky in the background. Very nice. Anyway, keep going. There's just a couple more. Let me see. I found a tree that had a, um, a, a blob of uh, stuff. <laughs> no, it's uh, resin coming out of the, the tree. And it was a very interesting piece of resin. It was quite shiny and clear. That's the crop camera. Uh, it, it's pretty uh, and it's interesting, I thought. Uh, and this is the full frame. It's, it's just so much sharper. You can actually see the little colored inclusions in it, uh, which you can't see so well in the other one. Anyhow, right uh, as I was leaving, I snapped a picture of some fi uh, fir branches whatever they're called, Christmas tree branches. Um, and uh, they're, they're pretty much similar, but you, you most definitely see more definition, sharper definition and uh, just more pleasing background too. So that's it. I use a full frame camera for most everything that I do. I'm talking about handheld out in the field with the available light or with a flash i just don't see any reason not to to shoot full frame i think the the image is by and large are better um i think if we did an experiment doing this and i may do it some rainy day where we use the two cameras in a controlled situation where i really do set all of the parameters so they're exactly the same the only difference being the camera then we could uh, we could compare them but this is a quick and dirty handheld macro photography and for me there's no question about it it's it's definitely uh, full frame well i'm not even going to say i hope this was useful because i'm fairly sure it wasn't useful um, because you're going to be shooting macro with what your camera is regardless, which is good. But if you're thinking of buying a camera, buy a full frame. Do yourself a favor, because if you don't, you'll wish you did next year. Um, and now seems to be a pretty good time to buy cameras. Uh, I'll be back in a few days with, uh, with another project or two. And uh, I, I hope this was uh, helpful to you. If it was, please give me a like and um, or subscribe. That's nice. And thanks again to everybody who is subscribed and watches the videos regularly. Um, I got a lovely message from a chap named Mr. Chuck the other day, uh, thanking me for, for the work we're putting out there. And that was hugely gratifying to hear. Thank you, sir. So until I see you uh, next week, take care, get out. Side, take lots of pictures and stay safe. Cheerio.